Sometimes when I'm given a piece of equipment to work on, the owner will give me some information about it, but unfortunately, this was not one of those times. I'm not sure if I've ever said it before, but I do not like surprises, and this one was quite the surprise. I hate to say it, but it was so jarring that I even considered not working on it, but my curiosity got the better of me, so I guess I'm stuck with it for now. In today's video, we look at this pole saw, or you can call it a pruner if you want to, and the problem is that the engine is stuck and will not budge. But before we start to work on it, we need to clean it, that way we don't get dirt in places where it shouldn't be, like inside the carb, the fuel system, or inside the engine. Now this is only the cleaning video, so if it's not what you're looking for, I would recommend watching the repair portion of the video, and I'd like to thank you for taking a look at this video. Now I've gotten some great comments about just making the cleaning video much easier by using a pressure washer. However, I'd like to be considerate to my neighbors, and I don't wish to make any waves if you catch my drift. The first thing I'm going to do is take a look around and see if there's anything obviously broken with it that might get in the way of me washing it. Now the fuel line is broken which might let some water get inside the fuel tank but I'm not too concerned about it because just so long as I'm aware of it I'll just make sure I'll dry the tank of any water before putting fuel into it. The next thing I want to do is to show you the cleaners I have on hand to clean this machine. The first cleaner I have ready is Purple Power, which was recommended to me by some of the viewers. Now to be honest, it's a great cleaner for sure, however, I still like to have a few options when it comes to cleaning, so that's where Simple Green comes in. Now sometimes when the Purple Power doesn't work that great, I'll use this one, but yet again, I still want more options available to me, so I've also used Super Clean in the past as well. Now all three of these cleaners are great, and I'd recommend any one of them to get your machine clean, however, I've recently found that a degreaser from Harbor Freight works the best for me for those hard to clean areas. Now you don't need to agitate the areas you're cleaning, but it makes the cleaner, whichever one you're using, work even better. Now you could just spray it on and let it sit for a few minutes and then wash it off. However, you're going to find those areas that are thick with grease and oils, and you'll eventually need to scrub those areas anyway. So that's why I would recommend a light scrub and then a rinse. Now I have gotten some comments about the kinds of brushes I'm using. They recommend ones that were stiffer with stronger bristles, however there's a problem with that idea. You see what I want is for the cleaner to dissolve the dirt and grime and the brushes I'm using will help to get that done. If I were to use brushes with stiffer bristles, I run the risk of damaging the plastics that I'm trying to clean. Now would it work better? And the answer is yes, but at what cost? My take on it is to let the cleaner do its job and the light brushing I'm doing is merely for theatrics. Now if you've seen my previous cleaning videos before, you might realize that I'm doing something a little different. Instead of just spraying, scrubbing, and rinsing over and over, this time I'm trying to spray the entire machine first and then scrub it and then finally do a rinse. Now this might make sense at first, but depending upon what kind of material I'm spraying the cleaner on, I can't always use this method. The reason is pretty simple, it's the material I'm cleaning. The body of this pole saw is plastic and the color you see is not paint, it's the plastic itself. Now if this was a mower with a metal deck, it would have been painted, so then I'd have to be careful about how much time the degreaser stays in contact with it. Now with this being plastic, I don't have to worry as much. Now according to the instructions, I do have to be careful when the cleaner is in contact with certain soft metals as well because it could start to damage them, but it does take quite a bit of time. I will say this, I do not dilute my cleaners, I use them at full strength. Now this is not recommended, I would dilute them at at least 10% water, however it's your choice to use it whichever way you see fit, and right now I like the cleaners at full strength. I've also gotten some recommendations that if I choose to use the cleaners at full strength that it's best to also use chemical gloves as well, which I hate to say is something I need to look into.
As you can see, after getting all that dirt and grime off the engine, you can see it's in really good condition. I don't see any scuffs or scratches on it, which means it wasn't used all that much, which makes the mystery of why the engine is stuck even more compelling. As shown on the screen while I was spraying off the engine, I'm using a repurposed paint sprayer and the reasons are very obvious. First, since it's a medium pressure, I can hold it with my hands and not worry about getting hurt, unlike a 1600 psi electric pressure washer. The other reason is low water consumption. Nothing wrong with using a garden hose, but after 30 minutes of spraying, the ground gets extremely saturated with water, which doesn't happen when using the paint sprayer. The biggest advantage, at least in my opinion, is that since I'm using a bucket to feed water to the sprayer, I'm able to use hot water, which also helps to clean the stuff I'm spraying. Now, I haven't shown it on camera because, to be honest, I was never going to showcase it anyway, but if you're interested in it, it's a Graco Magnum Airless Sprayer. Now, it's not cheap, but luckily I was able to get this one for free because it had a small leak at the pump. The last thing we need to do is to clean the pole saw section. Now this might seem to be a waste of time, but keeping this part of the machine clean is just as important as the engine side. Otherwise, if you have a problem with this side of the machine and it's covered in oil, dirt, and sawdust, you'll never be able to see it until something terrible has happened. Now you don't have to be able to eat off of it, it just needs to be clean of dirt and debris, which unfortunately is what happens to this part. Now I've seen these come in with chain or oiling issues, and that's mainly because the operator wasn't able to see that there was even an issue because it was covered in debris. Now this one is in pretty good condition, but that's because this one is actually my own personal pole saw attachment, and that's because when I got this thing, they didn't bring their attachment with them. Now once I get the bar oil loosened up, I'll then try spraying it off. Now it looks a whole lot better, but because what I'm cleaning off of it is thick, sticky bar oil, there's still a residue on it, so I'm going to have to give it another round of cleaning. So I think this is about as good as it's going to get, at least for right now, and good enough for me to at least start working on it. Now I'm not sure why, but cleaning this pole saw proved to be more challenging than if it was a chainsaw. Now I'm not saying that you have to clean everything you work on, but I will say this, the look on the owner's faces when I give them back a working and clean machine is extremely gratifying. But what if they don't even notice that it's clean? Well that's okay, at least I know I tried my best to fix it. It also lets me know that in the future, if for some reason I don't have time to clean it, I don't have to because obviously it's not important to them either. In the next video on this pole saw, we'll try to figure out how it got stuck like the way it is because once we start taking a closer look at it, things are not going to make any sense. Then we'll see if it's something we can fix or if we're going to have to use it for parts. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.